Hello guys, welcome to Science Learning Gateway. I hope you all are doing good. After few days, Karnataka State Board exams are going to start. That is from 28 March. So, uh, now I am uploading the important question answers plus the previous question, previous year questions which are asked during the previous year. That is in 2019-20. Those questions have been repeated or it uh, there are much chances that these those questions can be repeated in this year also so i have included some previous year questions also and some important questions also from chapter from uh, chapter our environment this chapter is there in your syllabus so let's discuss some of the very important questions which are asked from the chapter our environment so let's start with the first question so see guys in the from this uh, lesson mostly for three to four marks questions can be asked so uh, it's and this chapter is very easy also so i recommend everyone to go through the chapter go through the question answers everything so that you can score three four marks full marks from this lesson so the first question which we have to discuss over there is name the pollutant which is destroying the ozone layer in the atmosphere so can you tell me which pollutant is destroying the ozone layer in the atmosphere the answer is chlorofluorocarbon and the short form is cfc okay you should you should remember the full form also that is chlorofluorocarbon it is uh, it is one of the chemical which is used nowadays in the refrigerator and in the fire extinguisher which is destroying the ozone layer in the atmosphere right so this is one of the chemical which is destroying the ozone layer in the atmosphere next question how is ozone important to life since uh, you know that ozone acts as a blanket for our atmosphere it protects us from the harmful uv radiations of the sun that's why ozone is important for all the living organism whether it is a plant animal or human being so what is the function of ozone layer ozone layer protect us from the harmful uv radiations of the sun Next is what is biomagnification? This question is also very important. What is biomagnification? So in biomagnification, what happens that the harmful chemicals, they get accumulated in a particular tropic level and that is very harmful for the organisms living over there. And that process is called biomagnification. So what is biomagnification? It's the process in which harmful chemicals enter the food chain and get accumulated at each tropic level. And this is called biomagnification. So you have to remember that in biomagnification, harmful chemicals will get accumulated at each tropic level next is why ozone layer is getting depleted at higher levels of the atmosphere so why ozone layer is getting depleted you must have seen in the news channels or in the newspaper these days that uh, uh, nowadays that our environment is getting polluted and also you have you must have noticed that uh, sometimes the news is there that the ozone um, that means there is a big hole in the ozone in the ozone layer means now the ozone la layer is getting depleted and it is not good for us right so why ozone layer is getting depleted ozone layer is getting depleted because of the effect of chlorofluorocarbon which are used these days in the refrigerators and the fire extinguishers right you must have seen that nowadays in every houses refrigerators are there in every schools hospitals offices fire extinguishers are there and this harmful chemical chlorofluorocarbon is used in those refrigerators and fire extinguishers. because of this chlorofluorocarbon the ozone layer is getting depleted next question what are the effects of ozone depletion means if the ozone layer will get depleted then what will be the effect on us on an, in our environment so there are very harmful effects of ozone layer depletion the first one is that it causes skin cancer in human being if there will be no ozone layer what will happen the harmful rays of the sun they will reach to us and it can cause skin cancer in human body in human beings next it can cause cataract cataract is a eye disease which is seen in human beings so because of the harmful uv radiation we can get cataract also in our eyes next it leads to immune deficiency disorders means our immune system will it will also become weak or some disorders will occur in the immune system because of harmful uv radiation of the sun it also affects the plant growth the harmful uv radiations of the sun they can affect the plant growth also so you can see that the if ozone layer will get dip uh, get depleted we can suffer from these disorders so it's is recommended that we should we should not uh, we should we should not use chlorofluorocarbon uh, so that our ozone layer should not get depleted because of the use of chlorofluorocarbon why cfc free refrigerators are man manufactured these days you must have read this in your ncrt textbook also that nowadays the uh, companies are uh, means uh, one guidelines 
are given to the refrigerator companies that they should manufacture refrigerator without using chlorofluorocarbon cfc cfc should not be used to manufacture refrigerator why this is so because cfc is a very harmful chemical which depletes ozone layer because of this nowadays um uh, nowadays cfc free refrigerators are manufactured okay so cfc free refrigerator are manufactured diseases because they are responsible for ozone layer depletion if cfc they will use in manufacturing refrigerator they will lead to ozone layer depletion because not to deplete that ozone layer layer from the atmosphere cfc free cfc free refrigerators are manufactured so you must have understood till now that cfc is a very harmful chemical which leads to ozone layer depletion so any of the question will be asked whether question number 1 2 5 7 these questions are asked they all are interlinked so you should remember the first thing that cfc is the chemical which leads to ozone layer depletion and ozone is very important for us because it protect us from the harmful uv radiations of the sun if those harmful uv radiation will reach to our body we can suffer from skin cancer we can suffer from cataract remember these points next question is what are what are biodegradable and non biodegradable substances this question is also very important from your exam point of view many times this questions are asked in differences that write the differences between biodegradable substances and non biodegradable substances give example and sometime it can be asked that what are biodegradable substances and what are non biodegradable substances the answer will be same so what are biodegradable substances biodegradable means degradable means which can be broken down into small small pieces right so substances which can be broken down by microorganisms are called bio microorganisms like bacteria fungi they can degrade they can break down the the some of the particles or substances into small small pieces those substances are called biodegradable substances for example paper then uh, vegetable peel fruit peel tea leaves if you will throw those things in your garden after some time you will see that those substances will mix up with the soil because the microorganisms they have broken down into small small pieces and finally those pieces will mix up with the soil so those substances are called biodegradable substances next what are non biodegradable substances the substances which are not broken down by microorganisms are called non biodegradable substances for example one day you have thrown one plastic glass in the garden after one month also you will see the same plastic glass is there in the garden because plastic is a non biodegradable sub substance it cannot be broken down by the microorganism so that is harmful for our environment it causes pollution in the environment so plastic glass those substances are non biodegradable so remember the differences between biodegradable and non biodegradable substance now let's move to question number 8 See, this is our question number eight. A food chain is polluted in a polluted aquatic ecosystem is given. Observe it and answer the following questions. Okay, one of the food chain is shown over there in a aquatic system, polluted aquatic system. Mean in a means in a river. Okay, so first of all, fresh water is there. After that, algae is there, and the next level is fishes, and the last one is birds. So, on the basis of this food chain, two questions are asked. Which organisms are disturbed more due to bio magnification, and why? And the second question is, this ecosystem will be destroyed gradually due to bio magnification. Why? So, let's answer the first question. Which organisms are disturbed more due to bio magnification? The bio magnification, as we have already studied, that in bio magnification. harmful chemicals get accumulated in the higher tropic level so which one is the higher tropic level over there the last tropic level is the birds so the most of the harmful chemicals will be accumulated in this tropic level and the birds will get and the birds will get affected because of this hmm so let's come to the first question so the first in the first question birds are disturbed more due to bio magnification as as birds occupy the last tropic level or the topmost level in the given food chain so maximum amount of uh, that harmful chemicals will be present in that bird tropic level causing bio magnification and that harmful chemical will accumulated in the body of the birds right so the answer of the first question is birds are affected most because of bio magnification harmful chemicals will accumulate will be accumulating more in their in the body of the birds next question this ecosystem will be destroyed gradually due to bio magnification why yes this ecosystem will be disturbed disturbed because of bio bio magnification it is a process in which accumulation of non biodegradable chemicals in the various tropic level of the food chain we have already learned the definition of bio magnification 
in biomagnification what happens the chemicals the harmful chemicals will accumulate it in the food chain or in the tropic level right so as the chemicals are non biodegradable means harmful chemicals cannot be broken down into small small pieces we cannot wash them we cannot remove them from the from the body of the organism or from the food chain therefore this biomagnification will lead to destroying of the ecosystem it will destroy the complete ecosystem because of biomagnification process now question number 9 this question was asked in the year 2019 or 20 in that question paper in karnataka state board so this question is important guys it can be repeated this time also so see a student places a piece of cucumber a piece of glass a banana peel and a plastic pen in a pit and closes it one student is there what he did he has made one pit and in that he has thrown a piece of cucumber a piece of a glass piece a banana peel and a plastic pen four things he has thrown over there so what changes can be observed in these materials after a month give scientific reason for these changes so what he did he has thrown those substances and he has closed the pit after one month what changes he will see over there as you all know that a piece of cucumber and a banana peel these are which type of substances these are biodegradable substances which can be broken down into small small pieces by the microorganisms so they will mix up with the soil but a glass peel and a plastic pen these are non biodegradable substances which cannot be broken down into small small pieces so these cannot be they will not be broken down by microorganism they will remain as such and they will create pollution so the answer is cucumber peel and banana peel are organic substances they are biodegradable and eco friendly means they will completely mix up with the soil but glass piece and plastic pen are inorganic synthetic substances they are non biodegradable substances and they will cause soil pollution in the environment so this answer you have to if this type of questions will come you have to think a little bit and on the basis of that you have to give the answer okay next flow of energy is unidirectional in an ecosystem because in each of this question was also asked in previous year exam in 2019 or 20 okay so this will be of one marks four options are given over there that flow of energy is unidirectional in an ecosystem because in each of you have already learned that whenever energy will flow it will unidirectional unidirectional means in one direction in only in one direction energy will flow why this is why because loss of energy is more than the amount of available energy whenever energy will flow from one tropic level to the another tropic level what will happen there will be some loss of energy and that loss of energy will be more as compared to the amount of amount of available energy whenever energy will be transferred some amount of energy will be lost so the answer is loss of energy is more than the amount of energy available now let's move to question number 11 observe the figure and answer the given question you can see a pyramid is given over there t1 t2 t3 t4 t1 is the lowest tropic level and t4 is the topmost tropic level on the basis of this we two questions are asked we have to answer these two question the first one which tropic level has maximum number of organisms why in t1 t2 t2 t3 and t4 in which uh, level the most organisms will be present in t1 more number of organisms will be present in t1 level because over there producers are present producers mean green plants green plants okay now in which tropic level chemicals like ddt are accumulated in the highest concentration as you know that in the last tropic level more chemicals will be accumulated because of biomagnification so in t4 level the accumulation of ddt will be more now let's let's see the answers of these question the first one is t1 tropic level has maximum number of organisms just now i have told you that in t1 tropic level more number of organisms will be present the first tropic level contains the greatest number of organism and it comprises mainly of plants plants means the producer they provide food and energy to all the organism and this primary producer they get the energy directly from where from the sun from sun the plants will take sunlight and with the help of photosynthesis process they make the food primary producers are more important to the whole food chain because they are the original source of energy and that is then passed between the other organism suppose plants are there the plants will be eaten by the deer or elephant after that those animals the plant eating animals means herbivores they are eaten by the carnivores so carnivores are getting are getting food from the herbivores so plants are the primary source of food for other organisms also even we are vegetarian or non vegetarian directly or indirectly we are dependent on plants so plants will occupy the 
by by occupy the lowest tropic level that is maximum number of the organisms which will be present will be in t1 next t4 contains the highest concentration of ddt means in the last tropic level the concentration or amount of ddt will be more as t4 occupy the top level in the food chain the maximum concentration of these chemicals get accumulated in our bodies now what is 10 percent law given example this is also one of the important question right so what is 10 percent law so according to 10 percent law what we have read that only 10 percent of of energy will be transferred to the next tropic level it's very easy 10 percent law says that that only 10 percent of energy will be available in the next tropic level for example if the energy available at the producer level is thousand joule suppose producer level means the plants are having thousand joule of energy in the next tropic level how much energy will be transferred 10 percent of 10,000 means 10 into 10,000 divided by 100. How much it is left? 100 joules of energy will be transferred to the next tropic level. Only 10% energy will be transferred in the next tropic level. So this was the example for 10% law. Now the next question, question number 13. Why is there a need to ban the use of polythene bags? all know you can you all can frame this answer you can write it in your own words as you know that polythene bags or the plastics they are non-biodegradable substance they cannot be broken down into small small pieces they will not mix up with the soil and in case they will cause land pollution also water pollution also and air pollution also if you burn them they will create a lot of poisonous gases in the atmosphere and they can cause air pollution also so polythene bags need to be banned because they are non-biodegradable substances microorganisms are not able to decompose it means they will not break down and it can accumulate in the land causes land pollution now the last question that is also important how is ozone formed in the atmosphere first of all can you tell me the what is the formula of ozone the formula of ozone is O3 means three oxygen molecules combine together to form ozone O3. So ozone at the higher level of atmosphere is the product of UV radiation acting on oxygen molecule. So what happens in the in how ozone molecules are formed in the atmosphere? Oxygen gas is present in the atmosphere because of UV rays of the sun. This oxygen molecules break down into nascent oxygen O plus O. Now in the next step what happened this one oxygen will combine with the oxygen molecule O2 to form ozone O3. This, these are the two reactions which are involved in the formation of ozone. First step is that UV rays will act on oxygen molecule. It will break, it will break ox oxygen into nascent oxygen, single oxygen molecules which are very reactive. They will In the next step they will combine with the oxygen molecule to form O3 molecule. So this is the answer of this question. See, ozone at higher level of atmosphere is a product of UV radiations acting on oxygen molecule. The higher level energy UV radiation split apart some molecular oxygen to free oxygen. These ox atoms then combine with the molecular oxygen to form ozone gas. The first in the first step, UV radiations will break down oxygen into O and O, means free oxygen. After that, that free oxygen will combine with the oxygen molecule to form ozone, O3. So these are the important questions which I thought that these questions are important from your exam point of view and also I have some I have given some of the important questions means I have given all the questions which are asked in the previous year exams also so please go through this question read your textbook once this is a very easy chapter you can score full marks from this lesson so don't skip this chapter at all thank you guys thank you for watching my channel science learning gateway if you are new to my channel then please subscribe to it and if this tutorial is helpful to you then please click on the like button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that whenever i will be uploading a new video you will get the notification for that and from your end also if you have any doubt in any of the topic or you want the important question from any of the lesson do comment in the comment box definitely i will reply to it thank you for watching